please can we pray in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. The Bible says that you are the Father of light in whom there is no variableness, no shadow of turning. That every gift, every good and every perfect gift comes from you, the Father of light. Father, Lord, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the gift of time. We thank you for the gift of inspiration. We thank you for the gift of your spirit. We thank you for the gift of your mercy. As, I, I, as we dive into your word in this episode, let your word come with light and with power. Speak to us, transform us, impact us. Let there be a transformation in our lives that will reveal your wisdom to the end that men will see and identify with our light and glorify you in heaven. In the name of Jesus, I come against every family spirit and I declare that let your word find full expression through my lips. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. So favor is in dimension. Favor is not the generic thing. There are dimension of favor. That favor. So in this book of Esther, we saw that the favor that God was able to manifest in the life of Esther manifested in three different dimensions. The first person Esther had favor with, it is not with the king. It is not with the king. We must learn to place our priorities aright. As powerful as destiny helpers are, if God did not help you, even when you stand in the palace, you'll be rejected. The first help we need is not the help of king. It's not the help of your uncle, your senator, and everybody. It's the help of God. So there are three different dimensions of favor as, we, as captured in the book of Esther. That the favor that God was able to extend in the life of Esther happened in three dimensions. The first favor that Esther had, the first person that Esther had favor with was God. He had favor with God. You do. So the first person Esther had favor with was the favor with God. You must understand that visibility, publicity, it's for spiritual. No system, no institution, no economy, no market space has the ability in itself to reject the man that God has endorsed. The endorsement of God is more powerful than the endorsement of the, an entire continent. As powerful as a continent, the entire continent, they are, not, they are not in any way comparable to the endorsement of God. So endorsement, publicity, visibility is for spiritual. In an attempt to be able to gain or attract the favor of man, we must do everything to ensure that we first attract the favor of God. Esther had an encounter with God. God was able to show his sovereignty. We could see the sovereignty of God manifested through the life of Esther. The sovereignty of God is that, is that ability that makes God to veto every protocol, to bypass and to break every protocol in, 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 a, in an attempt for He to show, showcase His mightiness and His ability. So we saw that Esther was a benevolent or, or benefactor of the sovereignty of God, that God was able to violate every protocol, everything to ensure that it's able to showcase his favor upon a woman that does not deserve it, that she's not deserving of it. As powerful as destiny, I believe in all, the whole concept and ideology of destiny helpers, destiny connection, social capital intelligence, and etc. But trust me, the most powerful destiny helper is God. When God endorses a man, even the devil will favor him. The Bible says, if the way of the man pleases the Lord, he will make even his enemy to be at peace with him. The enemy can be a tool in the hand of God to achieve a prophecy on the singular fact that he has extended favor upon a man. No system, no, no human being, no matter how tough the atmosphere is, the economy is, no matter how severe it is, no matter who is rejected and who isn't rejected, as long as we gain favor with God, the elements of the earth, both animate or inanimate, recognize the honor of God upon a man. So the first thing that happened to Esther, Esther had the favor of God. In the book of Romans chapter, chapter 9 verse 15, now let me read these scriptures. Romans chapter 9 verse 15 says, For he saith unto Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Now, this is God 
try to tell, try to flaunt of or or brag about his ability to be able to violate human protocol. God didn't create protocol or nature or men that created the protocol to violate or to rebel against his abilities. Anybody can be used as tool in the hand of God to bring the word he has spoken over your life to pass. So the Bible says here that God said unto Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. There are in the Petrarch and Scripture, read out those scriptures, there are several people that were used by God to do certain a phenomena, uh, to pioneer a phenomenal move or revival that they were not deserving of it. Mary, for instance. What prayer did Mary pray? Mary didn't pray any prayer. There are certain dimension of favor that God brings us into that is not a result of answer prayer. It's a result of an encounter with God's mercy. The sovereignty of his, of his personality. That which make God to be God. So the favor that God did on Esther, it is not answer prayer. She didn't pray. There's never a time as powerful as prayer is. You must understand that spiritual alignment and our, the intention of our heart is more powerful than the prayer we offer. In fact, there are several times we pray, pray, pray that if God is to answer all of our prayer the way we prayed, we will wake up after the answer prayer and, and deviate away from God. So in an Esther subconsciousness, God might have seen a motive. It might have seen an intention. Now, as many of us, many of you are praying for breakthrough. God, give me this. God, God know if he give you that, you will use it as a weapon to not just fight people or to fight to fight even him. How many times have God blessed us and we it affected our commitment in church, in our department, as ushers, as music ministers? How many times has God given us breakthrough or given us a relationship that didn't that drifted us? The last relationship God gave you, you stopped going to church. You play more important, you place more importance on the call from your spouse than the call from God. When God is calling you to the place of worship, rather prefer to go and be stoning yourself with rose flowers, stoning, expressing love in the cinema, in the movie, spending the night, spending the weekend, your life. That's, you must understand that there are many prayers we pray, quoting all manner of scriptures that may sound logical, but to God, an answer to that prayer we cry is the greatest avoc that will ever happen to him or to us. The greatest distraction that will happen to us is an answer. So there are many prayers that we pray. The most powerful way to pray is not by mutual, saying, uttering word. It's by aligning our thought to the thought of God. Aligning our desire, our motive. What is motivating our, 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 our ambition? What is motivating our goal? As we are as much of a certain goal, there are several things we say that is not corresponding with our intention. So God reads the heart. The Bible says God is the one that has power to have mercy on who you have mercy. Could it be the reason why you're in that spot is because the motive that is motivating what you do is corrupted. It's demonic. It's selfish. It's kana. The reason why you're asking God to open the door of nation is not because you truly have the kingdom at heart. Just the way when the Bible says that Mary, Eli, uh, Mary Magdalene came and broke a alabaster board, box before the feet of Jesus and the disciples spoke that they, would have, they should have used that money to meet the need of the poor. And Jesus said, this they say, not because they had the poor at heart. There are many decrees we are saying, all transits, we are calling for cars, private jet, open doors, that is not corresponding with the intent of our heart. So the first thing God checks before answering the words of our mouth, God checks the intent of our heart. How aligned is our thought to his thought? How aligned is our will to his will? How aligned is our desire to his desire? 